Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to reverse a pay run in Zero. Now in the past, it was quite easy to revert a pay run that you have posted back to a draft where then you can edit, make any changes you needed to make and then repost the pay run. Now since STP, Single Touch Payroll, has been rolled out in Australia, you can no longer revert a pay run to draft if the STP has already been filed with the tax office. So that means now, if you post a pay run and you file the STP and then you realize that there was an error and you need to go back and make changes, what you'll have to do is you'll have to reverse the pay run for the employees that were had the errors involved and you had to make changes on, reverse that back out in a separate pay run and then repost to make the changes. There are a couple of ways of going about this. One way, as I said, is to reverse the whole pay run for that applicable employee. The other way is to just post an adjustment. In this video, I'm going to show you how to reverse an entire pay run, which for many people will be the most straightforward approach and require less calculations. So let's go have a look at a pay run that has been posted recently. So we'll go to payroll, pay employees, and we'll have a look at this draft pay run here. So let's post this. Fortnite ending 14th of November. Post the pay run. And then we have filed it with the ATO for STP here. So we have posted the pay run, we have filed the STP, and then we discovered that there was an error with James LeBron. And because we have filed the SDP, we are not able, the system will not let us revert the pay run to draft and make the edits. So we have decided in this case that we wanted to, rather than post a payroll that uh, just posts the adjustment, we're going to reverse out the whole payroll and then post a new one from scratch. So what we have to do then is have a look at exactly what was posted. So we'll click in here. And then I'm going to open up a new tab. So I'm going to go right click, duplicate, because I want to be able to look at both of these tabs here at the same time. And I'm going to go back to the payroll section. So you can either go up to payroll here, pay employees, or even a shortcut to the pay employees up the top here. And we're going to add a pay run. So we'll click on the drop down, and because we were using the fortnightly calendar before, it has moved forward to the next period, 28th of November. But because we need to post it for the 14th of November, we're going to have to do an unscheduled pay run. So I'll click there. Select payroll calendar is fortnightly. And select the unscheduled pay period is fortnight ending 14th of November. As you can see here. So we'll go next. And we'll click on James LeBron. Well, the first thing I'll do actually is make sure the pay dates align. And this was payment date 15th of November. So I'll make sure that's the same here, which it is. If you need to change it, you can just click here and you can change it. And we're going to select James only because he was the only employee that had the issue and that needs to be reversed out now. So we're going to click into James's pay slip here so we can see more detail. And also we'll click into the pay slip here for the adjustment unscheduled pay run that we are working on right now. So basically what we have to do, anything that was posted here, we are going to have to do a corresponding entry, but as a negative. So it'll bring anything that was posted back to zero. So we had ordinary hours, 76 hours. We need to do minus 76 hours. And it's important to actually put the hours in here and not just put a one and then the lump sum. Because if you just put a one hour and then the lump sum, which is 1538.46 in here, it'll mess up the accruals for your entitlements for annual leave, sick leave, and so on. So we've got negative 76 hours, negative 1538.46. Let's check that. The pay rate looks a bit different, doesn't it? 2187.45. The pay rate has changed, so we need to make sure the pay rate is the same so that all the numbers match up. Negative 1534.25, 1534.25. So that matches. Now bonus and commission, we need to do a negative 500. Director's fees, we need to do negative 500. 
worker compensation, we need to do negative 500. And then as a gross wage, we have negative 303425. Does that match? Yes, it does. All right, next we have to reverse out the union fees, $10. So we put a negative in front of that. Now next up is the tax section. So we have 492 normal pay as you go withholding, and there was zero on Schedule 5. So we don't have to worry about that, but we have to reverse out the 492 of pay as you go withholding. And we come over here, and you can't click in here and just put a negative in it. So what we have to do is click Add Tax Line, and we want to do a manual adjustment for pay as you go. There's a few other things here for Schedule 5 and so on, but we had zero on that, so we don't need to worry about that but the regular pay as you go, we do need to adjust. So in the description, you can write anything here. I'll just say reverse out pay run so it's nice and clear what we're doing. And I will type in here, negative 492. And we'll check back over here. Yes, that is correct. Next up is superannuation. So there is regular super, and there is also some salary sacrifice. So let's have a look at our unscheduled pay run here. The regular super is 228.08, so we reverse that out. So as you can see here, it doesn't let us click into the amount field to type in a negative, and because we have negatives up here, it hasn't applied the 9%. So what we need to do, again, is add a super line and this will be the regular super guarantee contribution, and we're going to go fixed amount, because this will allow us to type in the negative figure, which is 228.08. I'll get rid of this field here as well, we don't need that. And now we have the super salary sacrifice, which is 50, so we need a negative 50 in there. And this does let us click into the field, so we can just change this to a negative. Nice and easy. Total adjustment is for 278.08. 278.08, that matches. We don't need to worry about this line here. All we need to check is that the net amount matches. So we've got negative 248.25. 248.25, that's a match. And we also have to look at the leave entitlements. So we have annual leave accrued 5.8301 hours. That needs to be reversed out as well. So I'm going to click add leave line, annual leave. Do we want to calculate leave accrual? No, we don't because we're going to hard code in the figure. We don't need this line anymore. I'm going to get rid of that. And in the adjustment field, I'm going to put in negative 5.8301. Same as sick and carers leave, we're going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to go add leave line, change this to sick leave. Calculate leave accrual, no, because we're going to type it in. And we need to put in a negative 2.9151. So then I will just scroll back up to the top, have another quick check that all these totals match up. So let's go up here. Now you can't match it up the top here because there were two other employees, I think, on the pay run, and that's the totals for all of them. But we can match it up to the subtotals just for James LeBron. So the gross should be 303,425. Yes. Taxes should be negative 492. Yes. Super should be negative 22808, which is the correct amount for the regular super guarantee. And we also have 50 for the salary sacrifice. And the net pay is 248225. 248225. So I'm happy with this. Everything looks good. There was the union fees, of course, as well. And we are going to post or save rather this will take us back or it won't take us back but it will save the pay slips so that we can now go back to the main screen of the pay run but we have an error here 
It says pay slips for employees aged 18 and over must include a super guarantee contribution line with a calculation rate. All right. That's due to that line that we deleted here, even though it had a zero value. We're going to see if we can add it back in with a calculation rate to get past this error. So we want a super guarantee contribution. Yes, we want we, we don't want to select the fixed rate because the system is telling us we have to post it with a calculation. So for that, we're going to do statutory rate. We're going to click OK. Here it is. The rate has changed from the demo, of course, but that's not important. It's in there. It's a zero value. Now let's try and save it again. So that's been updated. We're going to go back to the main screen now of the pay run and we can simply go post. Post pay run. And there you go. We can see here in the main payroll screen, here's the adjustment. All negative values. And here was the original one, fortnight ending 14th of November. Now what I would do is go through and repost another unscheduled pay run, again for the fortnight ending 14th of November, but now doing it how it was supposed to be done for James LeBron in the first place. So that is how you do it, guys. That is how you reverse out a pay run. Now, if you want to book in a training session, head over to qtraining.net.au. We do one-on-one -on -one training sessions, mostly for Myob and Xero, of course. We also do Excel and other accounting software. But we can help you with any issues you might be having doing your books or doing your accounting online. I hope that this has helped you understand why certain things have to be done certain ways in Xero. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.